Welcome back. You're still watching Finweek Money Matters. Finance Minister Ntantlanene already warned in his medium-term budget policy statement in October that we should brace ourselves for tax increases. But in studio with us to discuss, discuss what is likely to happen is Carl Mandy. He's the head of the National Tax uh, for Technical at PwC. Angelique Worms, the director of Global Employer Services at Deloitte South Africa. And Ferdi Schneider, the national head of tax at BDO. A lot of tax today. Let's start with you, Carl. What are you most likely to see the minister do? And uh, how far apart is that from what he should do? <laughs> um, look, I mean, the, the biggest issue that we'd be facing is around the question of tax increases this year, by no doubt. Um, what we do expect him to do is uh, the, undoubtedly those tax increases are going to come through. The question is what format they were taken. We're expecting that they're not going to come through on the corporate tax side um, or significantly on the personal income tax side. And in fact, not even on the VAT side. We, what we're expecting is that he's actually going to use the gap that he's got in the general fuel levy um, with the, with the um, prices of, of petrol having come down recently and over the last number of months. Um, that presents him with a window of opportunity to, to significantly increase that fuel levy. So we think he'll get the majority of his tax revenues that he's looking for from there mm -hmm. and maybe a little bits and pieces from the personal income tax side and other taxes as well. Angelique, is that what's most likely to happen? Are we looking at the fuel levy as where we're going to get the bulk of the revenue coming from, from a tax perspective? Absolutely. I agree with Carl. I mean, to adjust the personal income tax would be quite radical, especially since we have capital gains tax and estate duty and donations tax. So we see also that the brackets will be adjusted for fiscal drag and to ensure people still have enough money in their pockets, especially sort of on the lower end of the brackets. And I agree, I mean, to start adjusting the brackets before the Davis Commission has issued their report and made that public, I think is a bit uh, short-sighted. Mm. Ferdi, what do you think? And uh, secondly, just uh, pick up on the point that Angelique just made about the Davis Tax Commission. Well, what are the things that you are looking out for, particularly in that report? Well, not starting with the Davis com Committee at the moment, um, just adding on to, to what Carl has said um, and Angelique as well on the fuel levy, I agree with him that there is definitely a potential there. I think the, the danger there and the caution there is, is that one actually needs to go back to the basics. Why was the fuel levy initially introduced? Was it not more of a stabilisation as opposed to a money or revenue generation tool? And I think that is probably the case and should we not remain that as, in, as the instrument objective? Um, personal income tax, I, I do hear the point and I think it will actually go down very hard should uh, Minister Nenny uh, tomorrow and uh, next week rather <laughs> announce. Um, that time flies we when you're there. Friday. It's Friday. Um, <laughs> uh, it should go down very really hard should he uh, introduce uh, high personal income tax rates. Uh, the, uh, my view on that, however, is that he could actually play around with the progressivity scale or, or um, curve of the personal income tax. If you're looking at the personal income tax, it's been around for a while. We haven't had increases probably for 20 years, relatively. So, I mean, there's, there is scope there. Um, what's been mooted out in the market is that there's, there's probably scope mm. to introduce a sort of a wealth tax, almost going back to the 80s, 20 years ago, 20, 30 years ago. Um, that would be uh, devastating. I, th I think an instrument that we've not really touched on is actually an increase in the VAT rate. The VAT um, rate. Oh, mm, I don't uh, know. Uh, Let's pick up with Kyle on the VAT yeah. rate. I just think, is it not just taxing the poor? Why do people keep going back, or analysts keep going back to wanting to tax the poor? Should we just not be taxing the wealthy? They're the ones with the money. No, you, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think there's some misconceptions around VAT as well. I mean, first of all, it is not regressive. Okay, the World Bank study that's just recently been issued last year shows that it is progressive, although it's only slightly progressive. Okay, it's nowhere near as progressive as our as yeah, our direct tax system. Well, it's not regressive. It's um, not regressive. It, it, it is Quite right. slightly Quite right. pro it's slightly right. progressive in the sense that uh, the the wealthy pay more. Um, relatively speaking, than the, than the poor do on that tax. So that's a, a, an important point to note. Yeah, the, the important, another important point, though, is as I say, it's not as progressive, or nearly as progressive, as our income tax system. Yeah. So 
we, we do need to bear that in mind. But uh, you know, an increase in the VAT rate uh, is not going to happen in the current environment. It, it would need to be accompanied by other reforms as a package. And when I say other reforms, it's real reforms around social security. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the reason for that is to, is to compensate the poor for the increased burden that they'll have to, relatively speaking, that they'll have to, to bear. Angelique, jump in there. Yeah, uh, you know, the thing is as well, you don't really want to increase taxes to such an extent that the low income earners cannot contribute towards the economy as well. The whole idea is to try and stimulate the economy and in that way broaden the tax base. Mm. You know, to start attacking one tax over another tax, it, it, you have to look at the whole thing in, in unison. Mm. You cannot just try and fix the problem in one space and not understand the ramifications of doing so across all taxes. Mm. So I think, you know, we have to look at increasing the tax base in different ways. And we did see a couple of years ago there was a massive increase in the tax base. But that was more because more people were all of a sudden being included into um, tax numbers and things like that. But when you actually drill down into the detail, those people weren't paying tax. They were exempt from paying tax. So although the tax base seemed to increase significantly, mm -hmm. it didn't actually amount to much. Mm -hmm. Rudy, Quite do true. you think this progressive tax system that South Africa has, has been successful in addressing all the inequality issues that we have? Has it, has it been useful? I would like to get some, uh, some of you not agreeing with each other. I'm seeing too many nods here. <laughs> <laughs> we just like each other too much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not a bad thing. Um, um, my view on that, I mean, if you look at the, our, our income tax contribution to, to the taxes in total, it's about 56%. Our indirect taxes, mainly VAT, contribute, uh, contributes about 36%. So an and income tax is, by, by nature, it's progressive. Uh, indirect tax, such as a VAT, is a regressive, i.e. taxes the, the poor more heavily relatively to the rich. The, uh, the reason why I, I touched on VAT and a potential increase there is that we're probably looking at a shortfall at the moment of between 12 billion to 15 billion rand. Now, that's a huge gap to plug. If you increase the VAT rate with 1%, and taking into account Carl's comment that it's not really that regressive, and uh, other than for the world studies that he's, uh, World Bank studies that he's mentioned, uh, Professor uh, Fouri of, of uh, Orange Free State in the 90s concluded exactly the same on the South African VAT system. So, so we are not really theoretically going to, to bring more regressivity into the tax system. And we can raise probably be between 15 and 20 billion rand by a 1% increase. And that could, if we have the infrastructure, actually be used to directly alleviate poor, the poor of the poor. Ferdi, can I ask a question? I mean, if we increase the VAT rate, and assuming that the rich are now going to be funding that increasing VAT rate, would it have a knock-on effect, and what would that effect be on consumer spending? So by increasing the VAT rate and now closing that gap, are we not going to stifle expansion in other areas? Are people, or, or are the super rich going to be so, so super rich that it's not really going to worry them? I worry that the super rich would still pay that increased VAT for whatever item they're buying, but the sort of middle class people that are up and coming are going to feel it more. And by them curtailing their spending and cutting down their spending, I just wonder what impact that's going to have on the economy. Now, Angelique, that is a good point. I mean, uh, there's been mooted that that uh, VAT right could lead to inflation, which theoretically is actually also not true. because. Uh, it's a year-on-year -year calculation, so the next year that 1% that is wiped out. So theoretically it's not inflationary. Um, the effect on, 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 on the rich, I think consumption-wise, would be very, very limited. And I, I honestly believe in the World Bank report that the regressive nature is not severe, as severe as one would think. So I do not think that the consumption patterns would be we swayed that be yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, looking at the, at the international VAT right norms as well, are we, we're way beyond uh, or behind on developing and developed countries as well, at least two, three percent. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, if we could, if, if Minister Nenny could actually have the guts to do that, we'd be pocketing a lot of money, but I think the economic effect would, would, be, uh, would be severe then. 
Carl, jump it, it, in. Yeah. Um, look, I mean, I, I, I agree with what's been said. I mean, one point to note, though, is that uh, any tax increase or, or increase in the level of taxation takes money out of the economy and Absolutely. will impact on consumption. It doesn't really matter if you're taking that from a consumption tax like VAT or if you're taking it from income taxes. Mm. Uh, at the end of the day, it's money taken out of the economy. It uh, reduces disposal income and will ultimately reduce consumption. Just on the regressi regressivity issue and, and, and how progressive our tax system is, our tax, uh, the danger here is that uh, you start looking at, it, at individual taxes in isolation yes. or even looking at taxes in combination aside uh, from the rest of fiscal policy. And when I mentioned the rest of fiscal policy, we're talking about the spending side and in particular social spending. Um, you need to look at fiscal policy as a whole, not simply looking at, uh, at taxes in isolation and certainly not looking at individual taxes. And yeah. if you look at our fiscal system as a whole, our system is highly progressive. In fact, the World Bank study shows that it is, of the 12 countries that were studied, it is the most progressive tax system. It does the most to, to uh, address uh, income inequality of any of the fiscal systems. Mm. It's, uh, you know, my comment on this as well is it's all good and well to take money from people. But it is even more important to have controlled spending of that money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just by increasing various things, you need to know the knock-on it's going to have to people. Mm -hmm. Whether that be the super wealthy leaving the country, or like I said, you know, the middle class maybe not spending as much. Mm -hmm. What are the other avenues? We literally have just a minute left. Let me finish off with you closest to me. <laughs> what are the other avenues that you could use? I mean, we are still waiting for outcomes from the Davis Tax Committee. There's been talk of carbon tax. When is that coming Trusts. into effect? Trusts. Trusts. So are there any other ways that we can try and find money without uh, you know, having it uh, impact so much on individuals? Well, being philosoph philosophical, I, th I think the only saving grace then if we do not increase VAT, <laughs> if we do not increase personal income tax, is probably transfer pricing and uh, the OECD recommendations on which Davis Committee com uh, commented in, in December. Um, but whether that's going to, to close that gap, I completely doubt that. Hmm. I, I think we, we could see something on trusts though, because that has been muted, uh, sort of be put out there hmm. and then it went quiet and I think it's, it's going to come up again. Well, uh, lady and gentlemen, we have to stop it for there for tax, but I have no doubt that we are going to be discussing this again, and especially next week to find out what the minister has decided to do. Thank you so much to Carl Mandy, head of national tax for technical at PwC, Angelique Worms, director of global employer services at Deloitte South Africa, and Ferdy Schneider, the national head of tax at BDO.